everybody, in today's video I'm going to be showing you a Grinch sculpture. So this is made with a type of clay that's called Magic Sculpt. It is a two-part epoxy clay, so you mix the A and the B together at equal ratios, and then it creates this wonderful, durable, easy to sculpt with product. I am making this Grinch sculpture for my mother for her birthday, and so to make it a little bit more personalized, he's holding onto this list that, you know, you could think of as like a naughty or nice list, and it has the name of my daughter as well as my niece and my nephews on it, so all of her grandkids. It is such a cool, personal little thing as we are a Grinch fanatic family just overall. It fits in perfectly with the rest of her Grinch collection. I hope you like it as much as I do, and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So I'm going to start and I'm going to be using some jewelry, or not jewelry, some floral wire this time. And I'm going to be using that to create the armature of my Grinchy. So if you watched my other video that I recently did using Magic Sculpt, and if you didn't, I can put a link to it in the description box below. I used copper wire. This time I'm just using some floral wire. Kind of just depends on what I grab. And I'm going to be attaching the different stress points with some hot glue, which is also a little different than what I did before but it just kept the wire where I wanted it to be. And because this clay doesn't have to be uh, heat cured, it doesn't go in the oven or anything, it doesn't matter to use the hot glue, it's all good. Now I'm going to be wrapping my Grinchy in some aluminum foil to help bulk up some of the bigger areas like his butt. He's got a rather voluptuous bottom. So I'm going to be using plenty of aluminum clay there, a little bit on the legs. Don't overdo the legs, it's so easy to make the legs too thick. And then you have to add so much clay over the top of them to hide all of the foil that it just ends up being too bulky. So use caution when you're adding clay or adding the foil to say the legs or arms. I'm going to add a nice sphere of aluminum foil to his head. And now using masking tape, I am going to be applying that all over his body. So as I am sculpting over the top of the masking tape, it's going to sculpt much easier than over the top of the foil because it's not nearly as rough. The foil has a great tendency to poke through the clay and just cause a, a ruckus, whereas a, as the masking tape is smooth, it doesn't poke through the clay. It's just a much more user-friendly experience. So up over all of that aluminum foil, make sure it is basically entirely covered up. I am going to use on plenty of it to get it all over the place. I also use that a little bit to bulk up the neck area of my Grinchy. Now I'm going to use my two parts of my clay. There's a light colored gray and a darker colored gray. Half of each of those colors, mix it together till it is a smooth color. As my clay is a little bit on the older side, I've had it for five, six years. It is getting a little bit, um, a little harder to mix. Once it's mixed though, it's it's ready to go. So I'm going to very roughly cover the entire body of my Grinch. So I'm going to just smack this clay on there. I'm not going to put it on there in any kind of super neat fashion. I am going to just stick it on there best I can. This is mainly strength because his body will be covered up with some, you know, beautiful little fur outfit that he's going to have. So I'm not too worried about it looking completely perfect because you won't even see it. It will be invisible in the end. Going to blend this over everything. I'm going to smooth it out a little bit, but it's one of those one of those things where I'm not going to waste my time making sure that his body is perfectly smooth. I'm not going to add details to it because you won't be able to tell. And I'm at a point where if it's not necessary, I'm going to skip a step, you know? If you're going to take his outfit on or off, or if you weren't going to have a Grinch that was wearing the Santa suit, then obviously you're going to want to take a little bit more TLC on the body, but mine isn't going to have those things. So I'm going to know approximately where the coat will end, and I'm going to make sure that I fully detail his butt and his legs for where it is necessary, but everything between that and shoulders is just not a big deal. Just don't worry about it. Not not something to do. So I've got the clay going up and over the legs. I'm going to make sure that first I cover up all of my masking tape. It's really easy to tell since I used blue masking tape this time that it's all covered up. Once I have it done, just to that point, I'm going to take a little bit of time to smooth out my clay. For one thing, this is about the point where I need to mix up another round of my Magic Sculpt. And so because I don't have any to use, I was just going to take the time, smooth all that out before moving on. Now I'm going to sculpt a little bit more like going up to his shoulders. His neck is still mostly going to be covered up with the fur of his 
his outfit. So I'm not going to take a whole bunch of time to detail his shoulders either. But once it gets to the neck, then I'm going to make sure that that area does get all of the detailing that is necessary. I'm going to cover up his head. Right now, my biggest focus is making sure that this sculpture is covered in clay. A very thin layer of clay so I can add more to it where I want to need to. But I just want to get everything covered just so that it has that protection over it and it's just a really good a really good start. I do want to mention I did sculpt this Grinch almost entirely in a single night whereas my Santa set I spent days working on it because I'd let certain areas dry or cure um, overnight before I do any more on it. This Grinch I was just kind of powering through on it. I had a deadline to make so I was not wasting any time. I'm going to after I have it basically covered I am going to start adding just more detail more bulk to the head of the Grinch. If I was smarter I would have gone through and added the fur texture to the button legs where it, it will be visible but it it all worked out. It's all good. That just would have been the route to take if it's all <laughs> if it's all in a single day. I am going to just get the basic shape, and then I already have the facial expression for my Grinch picked out, the one that I want to use. It's the one where he's kind of irritated, confused, maybe a little bit, a little bit like, ugh, you know. He's trying to decide what's going on. So he's got that sort of sideways frown. I'm going to add the little wrinkles for above his nose, where his nose is. I'm going to smooth a whole panel of clay across where the eye area of this Grinch will be before I start carving in the eye details. The facial styling and the general like art style that I'm going for with my Grinch is kind of a hybrid between the 1966 original and this new 2018 Benedict Cumberbatch like the new one. I always just think of it as the new one. So it's a little bit of a mix of both. I do like the original 1966 better just overall. I like I like everything about it better. It's got the nostalgia for me but I do like the detailing of the new movie. I like the fur. I love some of the you know, just the extra, the extra animation that's available in this day and age. I do like some of those details, but I did want to keep the character from the original one. So I've got kind of a little mix going between the two, which I like. I figure to me, I kind of picked the best of both worlds when I was sculpting my face on my Grinch. But if you, you know, depending on what your preference is, what styles, make sure you look at some reference photos that really give you an idea of exactly how you want it to turn out so that you can, you know, make these decisions for yourself. I'm going to add a little bit more clay to the back of his head to smooth that out. The very tippy top of his head, I am not going to bother with too much more just because that's going to be underneath his hat. And like I said, with the other parts, if it's not going to be seen, I'm not going to do it. I am going to go through and add fur texture to his face all the way around his eyes, all the way around the back of his head. This is something that you're going to want to do with some kind of a pointy tool. It could be a toothpick. It could be, I'm using a lock pick set, which honestly I can't imagine actually picking a lock with or a pick set, I guess is what it was called. Not a lock pick set. I always just call it my lock pick set, but it's a pick set um, from a hardware store, really inexpensive little set of tools that works fabulously for using on clay in order to keep my tools from sticking to my clay because this is generally just kind of a, it's a very grippy product which makes it great for sculpting on top of things because it will adhere to nearly everything. So to make sure it doesn't adhere to my sculpting tools, do make sure that there is some water either on the clay just like rub a bit of water over the top of where you're going to be working or dip your tools into water. And either, either option will prevent them from sticking too badly or sticking at all for that matter. I'm going to add a bit more of my clay to the eyebrows and then using one of my pointy tools, add some texture at his little nosy with more of this clay. Obviously, that's what we're, that's the product line we're using here is Magic Sculpt. I'm going to poke in for the nostrils. I'm going to further deepen that split lip that he has. I'm going to add more clay over the top of his neck, blending it underneath so that there isn't that gorgeously weird transition from head to neck. It's just one continuous furry Grinchy all the way through. The great thing with the fur texture is it does mask a lot of those little transition spots or you know, any weird spots you can pretty much hide with some fur texture. Fur texture is a little tedious if you've never done it before. It's essentially just a boatload of tiny little lines. It does take some time. It's a bit like doing pointillism. If you've ever done pointillism, that is something I have sworn I will never do because 
Well, let's just say if you've never done pointillism, try it and you'll understand why I won't do it again. But I'm going to just go through, add all of that for texture over the top of every visible space, head and neck. And then after I've got that, I'm going to bend his arms a little bit just to get them to be about the positioning that I want them to be. And then after I have that so that their elbows are bent, cut off the extra wire if there is any, I'm going to sculpt from just below the elbow down. And the majority of that is not going to be seen because it's going to be underneath the coat the sleeves of the coat, but the little bit of his wrist and his hands will be seen. This is a spot where if you have the luxury of doing this project over a longer span of time than I felt that I did, then I would definitely do the arm like forearm down to the palm of the hand and leave the fingers for a different day because I was just making sure that this was going to happen as quickly as humanly possible. I'm going to continue on with my fingers and sculpt them to the best of my ability, which I mean, they turned out great. I'm not saying that they didn't, but it would have just been easier, a little more efficient over the course of time if I would have just done a part of it and then waited because it would have been a little bit easier to get those fingers into the position that I wanted them to. The hand that is going to be holding the scroll you want to kind of position the hand so that the fingers are bent forward a little bit, tips of the fingers bent back, thumb forward towards the same direction as the fingers, but leave a gap. So don't have the thumb like tucked down to the hand. You want to leave it open. On the other side, I'm going to have him with his hand in a little fist, and then it's going to be able to go and like sit on his hip. I don't need to worry about putting it on his hip right now. That's the reason that I'm leaving the majority of his arms just the naked wire is so that they stay bendy. That's going to make it way easier to put his clothes on and position his arms into like their final shape once they are, once I'm done. Um, I And I don't think it's an issue for them to be bendy. It's not like it's that bendy. And if, you know, the horrible things were to happen and say an arm were to fall off, if my wire were to get bent too much and break, I would just glue it back together and I I wouldn't be too worried about it. So I'm going to sculpt the second hand. I'm going to try to make the fingers the same length as I made them on the first hand. A great way to do that is to roll out a snake for the fingers and then just cut them to the length that you want them to be. I'm going to go over my legs. I'm going to add more legs, more clay to my legs since that original clay has now hardened to the point where I couldn't add the fur texture. So I'm just going to spread on the thinnest layer of clay over the top of the legs that I possibly can. They were too thin to begin with, so it's not an issue that I didn't finish them when I started them. But at this point, I do need to cover them up just to make sure that I have enough space to really carve in that hair texture. As I am covering them up and I'm using the same technique that I did with the body, just kind of a rough and tumble, keep going, keep adding clay until it's all done sort of a mentality. I'm going to be adding that from right where the bottom of his coat's going to sit all the way down to the bottom of his ankle. After I have clay over that whole area, I'm going to dip my fingers into my little water cup and then I'm going to smooth over the top of all of the leg and butt area with my fingertip just to get rid of any wrinkles, any lumps or weird areas. After I have 90% of the aforementioned weird areas out of the way, I'm going to use the same little pointy tool that I've been using all along and make him furry. And once the furriness has been applied to the whole area, same thing though, make sure that you apply some water to whatever area you're going to furify. Then you can go ahead and use your little pokey tool to make the tiny little lines then you're going to want to move on to adding his shoes. So to make sure that your shoes are approximately the same size, go ahead and make two spheres of clay. Make sure that they're the same size, same diameter, and so on and so forth. And then you're going to roll them into the generic shoe shape. And I'm going to use the tip of my finger to carve them and structure them a little bit better. Let those, let those cure overnight. The next day, come back, fix any areas that need it. There was one spot on his fisted hand that the wire desperately wanted to poke through the clay. I am going to fortify that area today with more magic sculpt, just blend it in. It does smooth in very nicely from one day to the next, a little bit of water, a little bit of scraping with your pick tool, and you would never know that it was not all sculpted at the same time, just because it does blend in fairly, fairly flawlessly going to just adjust this hand altogether. Like I said, the hands would be much better off if I would have done them one day and then the next day, you know, just split it up between the two days. Everything would have just gone over a little bit better. But 
you know, if you are feeling desperate, you do some silly things sometimes. But now that I have that done, I am going to take a large pad of the Magic Sculpt and I'm going to flatten it out into a generic shape. I am doing this on top of a piece of parchment paper, wax paper, or something along those lines. All of that is great. The clay won't stick to it. It does stick to nearly everything. So you don't want to do it on top of any kind of surface where you wouldn't want to risk it sticking. But this parchment paper, it's not going to not going to stick to that. So I'm going to make my base for my Grinchy with this nice thick area of clay. And then after I have that done, you could leave it like that and just, you know, press your feet in. But I wanted it to look a little bit more whimsical, a little bit more susical. So I'm going to roll sections of Magic Sculpt and I'm going to make them into almost like a right now it looks cobblestone-y just because of the color, but it's going to be like little snowballs, like he's standing on a pile of snowballs. So I'm going to press those down, different sizes. I'm trying to make them all kind of a little bit random, just pressing them in. And then after you have a nice large area of the snowballs filled in where you can't just put any size anywhere, fill in the, the gaps with the smaller snowballs so that they just kind of nest together. I'm going to continue adding them until they pretty much cover up the original section. I am using a very generous amount of clay to sculpt this with the intention of it being plenty heavy so that I know my Grinch won't be top heavy because he does have a lot more clay like on his head. His head has a, quite a bit of clay. So I don't want him to tip over. In order to reduce the risk of tippage, I'm going to make sure that this is nice and thick and heavy. I'm going to smooth over all of the snowballs with a water dipped finger. You can even see the clay change color once it starts to melt in the water and get wet, which I think is just really effective at visualizing kind of how, how that little smoothing technique works. I am then going to press his feet into that and then leave that overnight once again. After this Grinchy has had his second overnight cure session, I am going to paint him. You can paint the whole thing green just to start with. If you did watch my Santa video, I mentioned that this one was a lot simpler to paint. The fact that his hands you can bend out of the way so that they don't aren't so that you're not going to accidentally paint them and you can easily get to all areas. And the fact that he is based in just a single shade of green made him way more efficient for painting. But I'm going to go through and just apply this green color to everything that is definitely going to be visible. If you wanted to just paint up his body so that he didn't have, you know, the original clay color anywhere in case something were to rip open or whatever might possibly happen, you definitely could. Again, I'm just going for efficiency. That's my plan. I'm going to paint over the snowballs with white paint. It is going to take a few coats of white to get them to just be white and not have any of that streakiness or the gray showing through. I'm okay with that. I know it's happening. I'm going to use a slightly darker shade of green, more of a grassy green, to add some of those details to his face. I'm going to wash over a little bit, like under his eyes, forehead, cheeks. I'm going to paint his nose with that shade. I'm going to use a slightly brighter shade of green, do some highlighting. And then with yellow, I'm going to be painting in his eyeballs. As you are painting your Grinch, it is going to be a little bit awkward because that base is very heavy and it's going to almost be like a weeble where, I don't know if you know, a weeble wobbles, but it won't fall down, that kind of a thing. It's going to want to stand him up. So you sometimes have to be very like hold him with a nice firm hand so that you can really paint the area that you want. I added a pearlescent coat over the top of the snowball so that they had a like icy glistening look. Paint his shoes with red. I didn't add a cuff to the top of his shoes if you were curious about that because that is going to also be done with the furry fabric that I have. So I'm going to make sure that the shoes are all painted with that nice bright Christmassy red. If you are using fabric like I am instead of sculpting his coat and his hat, then you want to make sure that the red color of paint that you're using is complementary to your red fabric. I have these pieces of my Grinch fabric cut out for his coat. Hat two sleeves and the main part of the coat. The main part of the coat, I'm going to start by wrapping that around his body. And as I am wrapping it, I'm just going to check the fit. It wasn't perfect, but I am gonna say it's good enough that I'm going to begin hot gluing it in place. Now, when I say it's good enough, what I mean by that is if there was any major issues, I would definitely adjust them. But I know that as I am gluing this down, it's going to cover all of the areas that are necessary. And because the coat is furry, the fact that my center seam was off center is pretty much going to become invisible. It's just going to just match right in. I'm going to attach my sleeves. 
as a amateur sewist, I do know a little bit about um, the shape that fabric needs to be in order for it to fit a person. So I've got that nice bell curve at the top of my sleeve and I'm trying to glue this on with the, the right sides of the fabric together so that it doesn't show that raw edge. It's not a perfect process. It's a little bit awkward. It does work though. Just make sure that you don't burn your fingers. If you are concerned about burning your fingers, use the help of a tool like a tweezers or a pencil to help you if you don't want to be the one that's actually holding the hot glued areas if you don't want to use your fingers. Because my nails are a little bit longer, they go definitely past the tip of my finger. I, a lot of times, will use the end of my fingernail, which doesn't have any nerve endings. It's not going to burn to hold things together as I'm hot gluing them. I'm also a very experienced hot gluer, so this kind of thing doesn't even phase me as far as the slight risk of getting burnt. I'm going to glue his hat together. As I am gluing up the back seam of the hat where the two sides of the triangle come together. I'm going to fold them down in the shape that I want the hat to go in the direction. It's not going to glue it down in that direction, but it's going to make it so that it'll set nicely in that direction when I do go to glue it down. I'm going to add the little bits of the white fur trim around the end of, or around the top of his shoe, around the very bottom there, making sure that I just kind of go all the way around. This fabric I got from a very inexpensive Christmas stocking. It's just a red and white furry stocking and I just chopped it up. That was a very inexpensive, very easy way to get just the amount of this red fabric that I needed to decorate my Grinch. If you were to have to go buy fabric for this, it would be far more expensive because you'd have to get like, you know, 42 inches um, you could get like six inches wide, but it'd be very long. It'd be a very big piece of fabric. But if you can find something like a red and white stocking at the dollar store, that's just the right amount of furry. That is a far more economical method for getting this. The other thing that's great about using something like a stocking, because maybe you even have one that you aren't going to use, is that the fabric isn't so big and not really to use. Plus it's typically like a no fray fabric. It's something that's going to just cut and sew together or glue together very easily instead of sometimes those other fabrics that you get from the store that are a little bit fancier actually are more complicated to use at least in in my mind I'm going to glue the hat down so it's not sticking up anymore and then I'm going to use some pom-poms to do the final little bits on this guy we've got to add the three down the front of his coat and then you have to add a few if I would have had a single bigger one then I would have just added one on the end of the hat but I didn't so I'm going to use a combination of a few different pom-poms on the very end of the hat and and then last but not least, we're going to put in the naughty nice list. The list was sculpted with magic sculpt and then I wrote all the names with paint. And then that's it. I am so excited about this guy. This is another one, like I said, with my Santa family, something that I really hope stays in my family for a very long time. I love how durable this clay is. I like that this is something that I'm not concerned about it breaking. Not that I'm going to be reckless with it, but I just know that it's going to be able to be saved in our family. I hope you guys like this one. I hope you like watching the process and I will see you all next time. Bye.